Hey, this is Steven from techmaker.tv. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the factory pattern in JavaScript. In the last episode, we went through the adapter pattern and we worked out this uh, weather system here. And that left us with, I'm clicking through this in case you have the urge to copy down all the code, you have it all on your screen. Um, we, whenever we went through this, it left us with two classes here. So we have this possible weather source we can use for the weather bit adapter and the other one we could use is the open weather map. You can see here that basically what we're having to do is instantiate a weather source and then pass it into this dashboard class. So what we would like to do is based on some user input we want to let the system choose which class to use. So whenever you have a class that is choosing which class of an of another sort to instantiate you would call that a factory and I'll show you exactly what that means but this is if you want to research a little bit more just look up the factory design pattern and you'll find UML diagrams and stuff to explain this but I'm gonna go ahead and just skip straight into giving you a real-world example okay so let's start by getting some user input so we're gonna do that through the prompt here so we're gonna say npm install prompt and this is going to add a library called prompt to our uh, app here. And then at the top, I'm going to go up and I'm going to say const uh, prompt equals uh, require prompt. So I'm over here on nodejs.org looking at their documentation or blog posts around prompt. And this is where I'm getting some of this from. So, you know, I'm just going to copy this exactly and I want to paste it in our app to make sure that it's actually working right. So before we paste anything, I'm going to just run my code again. Node dashboard. And make sure you see what's supposed to happen. So you can see, hello, the current temperature in Chicago is 41, so on and so forth. So I'm just going to paste in right here. And I'm going to modify this a little bit because I don't really want to get username and email. I want to get uh, weather service. And we're just going to say console.log weather service and result.weather service. Okay. And we're going to get rid of this line. And everything else should be fine. So let's run this and see what happens. So it's saying uh, prompt weather service and then I hit the number one and it says command line input received uh, one. Okay, so it's getting our um, input. Let's, I want to check one thing really quick. I want to see what is the type of this thing. So let's run this again. It's going to prompt me. I'm going to hit the number one and it's a string. Okay, so that's cool to know. So what we're going to do is at the top here, before we prompt get, we're going to say console.log and we're going to ask which weather service do you want to use? And then we're going to console.log again and we're going to say uh, for, let's just say number uh, enter one for open weather map and we'll do two for weather bit okay so then what we're gonna do is just like um, we don't need this console log stuff and what we're gonna do is actually just for now, bump this up into the prompt get. Okay, you with me still? So let's run this and let's see how it plays out. So it's saying, which weather service do you want to use? Enter one for open weather map, enter two for weather bit. So we're just going to hit the number one. And hello, the current temperature in Chicago is 41. Okay, cool. All right, so what we're going to do now is actually use the choice that the user made, and I'm going to go ahead and um, 
change the name of this variable to uh, user choice. Then what we're going to do is down here, we're going to say if user choice uh, dot weather service equals one, and remember that is a string, then we're going to say else if, and then copy this whole thing again. We want to say if it's two, we're going to set a variable weather source up here. And then I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, if it's one, well, what is this? If it's two, it's weather bit. And if it's one, it's open weather map, right? Okay, so let's run this and let's see what happens. So run our thing here, hit the number one, hit it again, hit the number two. So we're getting weather for both. Cool. So I want to go ahead and um, change this up a little bit up here. So I'm going to add a new line and I'm going to say uh, brought to you by info.weather service. So that means we're going to have to go over here to our uh, weather service or to our various uh, yeah I guess they're weather services and just say weather service and give it the name and so this one shall be weather bit and this one will be open weather map just want to make sure we're definitely pulling from the right spot here so let's run this one more time we're going to pick open weather map and hello blah 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 brought to you by open weather map we're going to pick weather bit brought to you by undefined did i not save that that time I'm kind of bad at that lately brought to you by weather bit okay sweet okay so now we're ready to talk about the factory design pattern so what's happening right here if you look right here we are defining a weather service based on choice by the user. So what we could do, what we would like to do, is change this so that this actually says new, uh, maybe like weather service dot four um, user choice. Actually, that wouldn't be new probably, it's just gonna be weather service dot four user choice. Okay, so let's define a new uh, file up here we'll call it weather service you could call it factory um, maybe that's a good idea I kind of like it it's a little bit cleaner to call it J or weather service to me personally um, so we'll say class weather service and then we'll create a static method uh, static and then we're gonna say for uh, user choice static method is basically uh, like creating a class method so I come from more of a Ruby background so this is essentially like creating a class method so you call it directly on the class and not on an instance um, so then over here what we're gonna do is the same thing we're actually just gonna cut this And here I'm going to paste that, and at the end I'm just going to return weather service. Okay, now we need to do um, module.exports equals weather service, and I want to import it at the top. Or require it rather so I want you to notice something so when you're doing all this sort of object-oriented stuff one of the things you're kind of thinking about all the time is dependencies so um, 
you'll notice that like whenever it's you know technically we didn't really have dependencies because this is all happening down here um, but we have to know about less things you know to run this code we have to know about less things so that's an interesting thing to consider um, anyway so what we can actually do is get rid of these now actually I can't get rid of them I have to cut them and put them in the weather service because I'm calling them there I knew I was forgetting something so but at the top level whoever is executing this code has to know less and that's great um, so really only know about the weather service factory now um, and then you have your dashboard which is here so before we brag too much let's run this thing okay number one weather service is not defined oh it's because I returned weather service and not weather source okay now let's run it again and see what happens okay so it looks like we are rocking and rolling now so that's basically factories um, the system is choosing which class it needs to instantiate for you in this case based on user input um, in other situations it could be based on other things but the point is at the top level you're not saying you know which class to use you're just saying hey give me the right weather service for this situation so that's what a factory is in a nutshell um, I've got a couple more I don't know how many more I've got some more uh, episodes that I'm gonna do on these design patterns um, if you like this leave a comment below and let me know I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions and if you've got any special requests hit me and I'll uh, do my best um, otherwise, I'm going to post the code on GitHub at some point, so I'll link to that in the comments whenever I have it, um, or in the description rather. But if you're into this and you want to keep getting more of this stuff, definitely subscribe to the channel because we're going to be cranking out more and more of it all the time, every day. Um, so with all of that, I will talk to you in the next episode.